Bandwidth for all shows on the Aussie Tech Heads network is supplied by Aussie Tech Heads web hosting. For a fast, affordable and reliable Australian server with fantastic support, contact Aussie Tech Heads web hosting at aussietechheads.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's best hosting service. Welcome to episode 360 of Aussie Tech Heads, recorded on 26th of September 2013. Uh, we're joined every week as usual by the lounge, uh, aussietechheads.com.au slash live. Um, uh, we've got our regulars in there. Thanks guys for turning up and helping us with uh, the issues we face doing the show. <laughs> Uh, bandwidth for Aussie Tech Heads is supplied by Aussie Tech Heads Hosting. If you need fast, reliable, professional web hosting for personal or business, check us out, aussietechheads.com slash dot au slash hosting. Um, it's a rather small uh, staff this week. Basically, there's myself and there's Shane. Hey, Shane. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Well, it's not the quali- it's not the quantity of the people, it's the quality that's, of the people that's that right. counts. Couldn't yeah. have a better two people on if you ask me. So, uh, obviously, Glenn's... Um, Glenn's crook tonight, so he's not here. He's been quarantined to his bedroom and he's watching us on his iPhone or tablet or who knows, one of his gadgets. And uh, so we wish him all the best and get better for next week because um, it's too hot for me to be doing this. It's 35 in my room at the moment, which is enjoyable. Um, alrighty, Shane. So what has been happening with you, sir? Um, I have had an up and down week. Um, the highlight of the week is that my trip is getting closer. I, it's less than a week. This is my last week for about three weeks. Um, so yes, I'm going to LA and San Diego for those who don't know and um, for those who care. <laughs> and um, and work-wise, I am in between jobs at the moment. Uh, well, if you're going to be between two jobs, being in between them is the best place to be. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, what's the weather been like over there? No, we haven't had summer yet. It's still oh, peeing down with up. rain. Shut up, that's enough. You can stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> it hit 39 here today. It's like 104,000% humidity. Um, it's not good. I mean, it's this hot now. It's bone dry. There's, but when we are going to get storms, they're going to be nasty. Um, so, yeah, it's not even not even summer yet. So where is it? I might it's have to get used to the weather if um, all things get planned. <laughs> Yeah, well, if everything goes according to plan, come over, say good day. Hey, at least you'll be in the right time zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I won't be scoffing me dinner down just before the show starts. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'd just like to mention too, video of the show can be seen every week at um, aussietechheads.com.au slash video or the current video is always on the homepage at, at uh, each week. Glenn gets around to doing that. We have a twice daily paper which comes out on the iPad or the desktop, aussietechheads.com.au slash paper. Um, it's got a few things in there. It's not just tech. It's got some business, education, leisure, art, all the cool things in there. Um, we rebroadcast techwebcast.info most uh, weeks before the show. We didn't this week because I didn't have a copy to do. But uh, keep an eye out for that. You can watch that if you go to... Uh, don't forget we've got aussietechheads.com.au slash radio where all our shows are rebroadcast, including... Uh, tech webcast and iBlind Tech and Aussie Tech Heads and uh, um, the other show that I can't think of. What's the, our, our, our Mac show that's got Warlock and uh, <laughs> Aussie Mac Zone? That's the one. I'm like Mac Mac Zone. Oz, uh, <laughs> yeah, but the a only plethora th- of shows on that radio now. It's yeah, good. it's going going great guns. So we've uh, we really started to to come alive in that respect and. Um, you know, there's there's sponsors here and there and interested and, and in discussions and so things are starting to happen. Um, if only we could get decent internet in this country, we could actually have uh, <laughs> you know proper live streams and and all that good thing to go with it. So yeah, well the election stuff that up. <laughs> yeah, well, among other things. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so that's not going to happen. I 
I uh, for a while, I don't believe. But uh, so yeah, basically we record the show um, any time after seven thirty, usually after eight o'clock on Thursday nights. Uh, join us in the lounge, or you can watch it, you know, on YouTube later, or or download the podcast from uh, iTunes and leave yourself a. A, a comment and whatever on there and let us know what you think uh, good, bad or, or indifferent um, we're always looking at ways of improving the show so if you can help us out that would be great alrighty so I guess um, let us start the week with your um, with your this week in tech history and uh, we'll see how things go alright no worries so and this is courtesy of Tom Merritt and his chronology of tech um, usually what I do is gather a week's worth, but I only probably read about three or four of them. So let's start with September 21, 1999. Google came out of beta. The young company announced its new Google Scout feature and the launch of its new website, removing the beta designation from the Google search engine. That was September 21. September 21 again, 2000, a year later. Kevin Mitnick, one of the most famous um, hackers in the hacking sort of IT geeky community, was released from Lompoc, California prison after almost five years of incarceration. Uh, there's another one about him somewhere. Anyway, I will read on. Uh, September 22, 1791, going back a bit. Michael Faraday was born in South London. He grew up to discover electromagnetic induction and coined the term electrode cathode and ion he also lent his name to the faraday cage mm-hmm. uh, facebook uh september 22 2011 facebook announced its new timeline feature which would collect all your posts and materials in chronological order replacing the old profile um the jury's still out in my opinion on whether that was a good thing i was gonna or not. say it's been two years and it still doesn't work properly yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, they should have a beta sign on their website <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Trying to find some more. Uh, here we go. September 24, 1979. CompuServe began offering a consumer version of its dial-up online information service called Micronet. The name would wow. later be changed to CompuServe and offer public email, among other online services. Uh, and September 25th, 2001, Apple announced... The release of Mac OS 10.1 Puma, the first major upgrade of OS X, OS X or OS 10. Uh, and there was another one that I wanted to do. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, September 27, 1983, Richard Stallman announced the GNU or GNU project, which aimed to uh, at the time to develop a free Unix-like operating system. And here's that second one from Kevin Mitnick. I knew there was another one there. September 27, 1996, Kevin Mitnick was uh, indicted on charges. Um, He broke into the systems of major software companies and then transferred stolen material to computers at USC via the internet. Seems uh, prosaic today. Prosaic, prosaic. Is that the right word? Anyway. No, nice. Uh, but was um un- <laughs> oh, yeah, okay yeah so basically it means it's kind of you know, normal today but was unheard of at the time and the only other one that I wanted to mention because Glenn's not here so I got a bit more <laughs> free reign was and it's not really techie related but it was still a monumental thing that happened thirty years ago today September twenty sixth nineteen eighty three Australia two won the America's Cup. Yes, it did. Australia too. It was yes. also wasn't that also its last or was that its first race? I can't remember. Oh, there's a whole series of races, but yeah, but um, I mean that like that year, that season. Oh yeah, it was the last. I think yeah, it was the last race in the series. Um, something similar to because it happened to have finished today as well in San Francisco, where the Americans came from eight one behind to win nine mm. eight against the New Zealands. Um, I mean, they're called the Americans, but apparently out of the whole team, there's only five Americans. <laughs> the tactician was a British guy. The captain, um, yeah, the captain was a bloody um, an Australian, the guy steering the boat. Yep. And, I mean, and they're not even 12-meter yachts anymore. They're some bloody 
double hull oh, they're catamaran amazing. looking thing. The, the, it's compl completely insane the new things they're just ridiculous yeah so um that was off san francisco obviously when we won it it was off of um newport rhode island mm. yep okay that ends the sports segment it does it does and uh i mean if you think about it it does involve tech i mean you think about how much technology has gone into into those things in the last 20 years it's or 30 years you know they, they started off as a wooden boat and now you know they're just carbon composites and they're just so light and so fast it's it's amazing well i mean even australia too i mean that was breaking ground with the wing keel and yeah and all that sort of stuff the thing that they wanted banned and now everyone else is using yeah <laughs> so all righty i don't know if you guys are aware uh those who have android phones would but um Google's been updating a lot of their apps and streamlining um, streamlining the process, not only on the phones, but also if you use Chrome browser, you'll notice the home page has changed now. They've got it all all sort of minimalistic and as they love to do. And um, they've changed a lot of their services like that to look different. YouTube's no exception. Now, they've been playing with YouTube on and off for, uh, uh, you know... Um, really badly probably the last 12 months they've really started messing up they've dropped things like video responses they've they dropped the threaded comments um you know it, it, it's been sort of hit and miss but they've finally released what they're they're sort of doing lately um they've brought back threaded comments which is fantastic so basically now um when you when you reply to a, a comment it threads down the screen so all the comments are uh, are lined up correctly so it makes sense when you're reading them now um so that's a good thing um but they've they've tried to um one thing they've changed and and, and this will be interesting is you might be watching a video the, the example they give is justin timberlake in 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 here and what it the comments are threaded in such a way that it takes information from things like Google Plus and things like Twitter and Facebook as well as YouTube and the video that you're watching um, the comments posted may not be from that video but they're from a video <coughs> that relates to this one so in some respects I mean it's gonna be okay it's gonna stop the whole yes I'm first you know <laughs> stupid comments but um, you just have to be aware that when you're actually reading the comments, and I don't know if you guys can read this in the stream, but they give an example there of, of um, the commenting system, how it says things like, you know, they're, they're talking about... Whoops. Oh, great. Now I've done, gone and done it. Gosh darn it. Ah. Did I mention I hate Chrome when it does that? <laughs> it just wigs out sometimes. But, uh, yeah, you'll see that, you know, they're talking about um, kid presidents prep talk to teachers and students, but the, the first comment is a Google Plus comment that just happens to be talking about that particular video, and then there's one on that video, the next one down is a Google Plus one. So, it's, yeah, it's more than just, <coughs> more than just um, directly, direct feedback on that video. So... So it's not just YouTube comments anymore that Google's now dragging them from other related services. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would imagine you have to have them linked to some de degree. I'd imagine they wouldn't just be randomly pulling stuff out of the ether. I wouldn't imagine. Although they'd, it's not like they don't have the, <laughs> the provisions to do that. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if it changes the way people comment because now instead of you know what I mean like you, you can still directly comment on that video but if your comment's sort of not relevant it's going to get lost very quickly and it's only the relevant comments that get liked and get replied to are going to be bumped up so it's kind of I guess a self-moderating forum I suppose if people don't like the comments it'll just disappear isn't that how um, Reddit works? Um, yeah, sort of. I think there's there's a little bit of difference, but I think it's fairly similar in in that approach where it, it self moderates, and if it's a good, you know, a, a good uh, um, comment or a good 
like or whatever, it, it will go to the top and then the rest sort of vanish. Um, there's been a couple of other attempts. I remember, I can't remember what it's called, but I remember, um, was it Hootsuite? No. I can't remember what it's called. There's one a couple of years back that was the same sort of thing and it, it did that. Um, you could post a comment, but unless people read it and responded to it, it would just disappear. So. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So, All right, what's next? happening? Do you want me to do one of my stories? You certainly can. All right, we'll, we'll follow. We'll do an Android one just for you since you're kind of running the show. <laughs> uh, oh, excuse me if I kind of go into a coughing fit. I'm no, still trying to no excuse. Fight <laughs> All right, I'll just hold my breath for half yeah, an hour. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, remote lock comes to Android. Android device manager. Uh, the new remote locking feature just appeared in the Android device manager. Users running Android 2.2 or better can now lock a lost uh, or stolen phone even if it's in use. Functionality asks you to enter a PIN that will unlock your phone once it's found. Google re uh, recommends that you use something different to your current password, of course. Um, if your phone isn't on a Wi-Fi or mobile network, the lock command will wait until the connection is established and a full remote wipe remains as your last resort. And that was a story courtesy of Gizmodo. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, how a lot of these features that have been apps and been options, every time they update the Android, they the ones that sort of make sense, they introduce into it. Um, I mean, I've been using an app for ever since Android came out called Find My Droid, and it's the same sort of thing. It, uh, you know, if you lose it, you can you can do everything from just send it a text message to find where you are. You can, um, you know, you you can s send another text message so it um, makes you know, makes the phone go off, or it'll send your GPS location. You can text it to turn on the microphone so you can hear what the surroundings are. Um, turn on the cameras, see what's going on. So, and same thing, you could lock it, you could password lock it, and you could also do a factory reset on it and destroy all your data if it, if it comes to that. And that's been a, an option for, you know, what, four or five years now since the, sort of the first lot of phones come out. But they've picked it up and they've, they've run with that and um, introduced it as, you know, more or less a standard feature now, which, which is good. Um, for one, it's probably going to be more stable because it is part of the operating system instead of an, an add-on. I know with um, with Windows, I'm one of those people that I prefer the operating system do something rather than having to install an application to do something. So, yeah. like, um, you know, I'm glad that Microsoft now includes something like um, the antivirus thing that they've got. Can't think of the name. Defender. Um, yeah, no, I was thinking of uh, oh, essentials. essentials. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, Defender, so yeah. that's good. Um, and then there's other things like, you know, the fact that it does defragging in the hard drive and all that kind of stuff so you don't have to add uh, a utility that, that does that kind of stuff. I mean, I know that utilities that are specific for that are probably better than what comes with the actual operating system, but... You know, I'm not one for installing stuff if I don't have to. Mm, exactly. But there is a problem there as well, um, uh, you know, sort of about, you know, the operating system controlling too much, like in your case of having a constant defrag. Well, that's fine right up until the point you introduce an SSD. The last thing you want is to constantly be running a defrag on an SSD. So, you know, so there are, of course, downsides, <coughs> downsides to having the operating system do too much, but... I guess the implementation is the way you can make the operating system do everything if you have control over what it does. You know, um, unlike the the Apple infrastructure, for the most part, your operating system will do this because we say it will do that, and that's all it will do. You know, um, which, as we've said before, is a great way to maintain control over your hardware and software and make sure it's reliable. It's a problem in terms of you you know back end user functionality for the user saying oh I don't really don't like that feature I don't want it to do it because it annoys me well tough <laughs> yeah. so you know um, no you're right though but uh, speaking of uh, Android um, there's a new Android the new Android that's coming out is of course called KitKat as we know and um, the first bunch of Android KitKats have hit the stores at Woolies so um 
make sure you go and get that because I will be. <laughs> so it's a um, it's a cross promotional thing with whoever makes Kit Kat, Nestle, or whoever. Nestle, it was. yeah, it worked out really well because what happened, um, basically, they were running out of ideas in terms of generic names, and Nestle went to them and said, "Well, why don't you call it Kit Kat? Everyone knows what Kit Kat is. We won't charge you a licensing fee. You're quite welcome to use it." and expose our name to your hundreds of millions of users <laughs> that, that deal with your product every day. You know, That's so amazing. it's a very mutual agreement and it's great because they can do things like this. You know, in this case, you can win, um, what are you winning? There's more than $25,005 Google Play cards. You can win one of a thousand Nexus 7s. You know, there's all this stuff that um, Google have, have g- said, you know, well, all you got to do is print up some special wrappers. You can win all this stuff. And... Um, you know, so it, it's not only bringing the awareness of KitKat and the awareness of Android, it's giving you something for buying the KitKat, noticing Android and going, oh, I might be able to win, you know, whatever. So that's a great idea. It's really um, really a clever marketing scheme on, on behalf of both of them, not just, you know, not just the one company, but... It's a concern that they've um, that they're saying that they're running out of names and they're not even halfway through the alphabet. Yeah, I don't think they're running out of names. They're running out of generic terms, because um, okay. pretty much you know Froyo, you know donut, um, ice cream sandwich, they're all generic names. You know, but I think you get to a point where everything, and America being America, everything gets trademarked. Yeah, you but know. I think they shot themselves in the foot where they are trying to stay with the. Uh, yeah, the dessert kind of names or whatever it is. No, there's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty yeah. of them. They're just going to have to um, be smart about it, like in in the case of this, you know. Um, and, I mean, there's nothing to say they're going to stick with that. Once they hit the next version, the next major version of Android, they might completely change the name, you know. It might just be called Tom or something. You know, you don't know. But um, it's just, yeah, you know, for now... Fair enough. You're right. Are we moving on? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, you're fine. Off you go. Sorry. <laughs> I was oh, no, I just said fair enough with what you were saying. Yeah, well, I wasn't yeah. saying I was going anywhere or wanting oh, you okay. to shut up or anything. <laughs> shut <laughs> up. Get off. This is not your show. You haven't been here. You're a ring in. <laughs> But, uh, uh, have you yeah. got any? Um, did you want to do one of your stories? Yeah, I got a couple here. Um, the one I'm actually quite excited about is the new um, Ubuntu operating system to come to mobiles. Uh, it's pretty much obviously going. The phones are going to be Android sort of style based phones, um, but it's called Ubuntu. Uh, yeah, Ubuntu, Ubuntu Touch. Uh, next year, October, sometime next year, will be coming. Be available on Nexus, and possibly they'll have their other phones out by then. But basically, <clears throat> they tried, uh, I think it was last year, or no, it might have been earlier this year, they tried a campaign, um, Ubuntu tried tried their Edge uh, Indiegogo campaign, which was basically trying to put Linux onto, or Ubuntu onto certain phones, um, but it ended up being $800 a phone, that was sort of what killed them. Um, but they're trying this time, because they're going to use existing hardware to start with up until the point where they release their own phone um so they're basically releasing stable builds for the galaxy nexus nexus 7 nexus 10 uh and the nexus 4 will follow that as well so it's basically going to be um ubuntu in in i mean being linux based anyway it's very you know fairly easy to uh to adapt to be functional on on any sort of device um and apparently it's going to allow things like it's going to be timed to to release with Ubuntu 13.1, which is Saucy Salamander, speaking of weird names. Um, <laughs> so, But apparently it's going to have the ability to interact completely with the Ubuntu operating system. You know, you can launch full desktop versions. Um, so you can dock it to a large monitor, for example, via your HDMI. Um, and you can use it as an actual... Ubuntu system on that monitor launching full screen apps and things like that so it should be pretty neat it's a another it's not really a competitor it's an entirely different workspace I feel but it's a really good idea and there's definitely going to be a lot of people out there who are excited for this 
Um, so I have a question all around the whole Linux thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like so there's Android, there's Ubuntu, there's you know a whole bunch of others that are all based around Linux. What, what, if they're all based on Linux, what makes them their own individual thing? Well, they're probably all based on Unix rather than Linux. Um, and that really is just a method of controlling a particular device, whether you want to control, you know, it's it's circuit level stuff. It controls every chip on that video memory board. It controls every piece of level two cache on the CPU, um, which is part of the reason it's so stable and when it's coded properly can be very fast. In the early days, Linux got a bad rap because it generally was clunky and slow or unstable or really hard to configure because because of the variety of hardware out there. But when you're dealing with a device like this, and that's that's where... I mean, even, um, you know, Mac OS and all that, they're all based on, you know, Linux or Unix or however far back you want to chase that. They're all based on that, but they're designed for a specific application like you know mac os is designed to run on this particular version of that mac ios 4 runs specifically on this hardware a bunch you know so the dedicated ones um generally are a very good example of what the software can do the ones that try to be widespread like ubuntu like um um red hat uh kde uh, all these sort of things. Um, there's Puppy Linux. There's s- so many different variants of Linux, and they all try and do the same thing and approach it from different angles. So, you know, th- unfortunately, it's one of those things when you're dealing with, and s- to some degree, this is also the downfall with Windows. You- you're dealing with such a massive hardware database that you have to try and be stable with, you know, so. Yeah, but didn't they haven't they kind of palm that responsibility off to the um, the hardware people? Like, you know, their responsibility to make the drivers and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, it is, but uh, I mean, there's a who's just because you make a driver doesn't mean your driver's going to work with somebody else's driver. You know, so even though the drivers may be there and the support may be there, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work properly. When you have control over the hardware, or you build it like that's why the uh, Cyanogen mods for the Android are so fast and so you know, so responsive because when they build a Cyanogen mod for the S3, for example, they're building it only to run on the S3. So all the other drivers, all the other peripheral options, everything else is stripped out of that code and it streamlines that code. Um, So, and I mean, there are a lot of stuff that people just don't write Linux drivers for. So there are generic versions of those drivers which are never as good as, you know, the the proper ones as well. So... Um, but yeah, I mean, something, as I said, where it's designed for a purpose, it's going to be a fantastic experience. Um, Linux on a phone that can be expanded onto a monitor. It's going to be like carrying a computer around your pocket. It's going to be fantastic. Sounds like you're a fan. I've always loved Linux. I've always hated the experience. Um, as opposed to Windows, I've always hated win- Windows and hated the experience. But Linux, I love the, I love Linux. I love the concept. I love the creativity. The fact that developers spend so many thousands of hours on this, and most of them don't get paid for it. Um, yeah, I love the Linux experience, or the yeah, the Linux concept the idea and, of and it, everything yeah. around it is great. Ninety percent of the time, the actual experience is a bit of a letdown, but that's usually. I mean, very rarely, that's the fault of Linux. That's just the fact that, oh, you've got some weird hardware combination that nobody's ever tried before or, you know, you've got a bizarre webcam that doesn't work or something silly, you know, so, yeah. Fair enough. All right, do you want me to do one now? Certainly so. All right, where can we go to from here? All right, we'll do something left of field. Have you heard of Presto? As in Presto Changeo. Hey, 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 Presto? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Presto, no, it's nothing like that. Presto yeah. is coming soon. It is... Um, actually, the, the article starts off with, hey, Presto. Um, that's the, it's the name of Foxtel's new online movie streaming service that will uh, give you an all-you-can-eat uh, entertainment for twenty four ninety nine per month. 
With Presto, you'll be able to access all movies that Foxtel has licensed to, including new releases. It sticks onto its movie streaming channels, uh, uh, which is the good news for people who like close to cinema release titles. Uh, the studio is currently signed on for Foxtel Movie. Uh, service include MGM, NBC Universal, Paramount Pictures, Roadshow Films, Sony Pictures Entertainment, 20th Century Fox, The Walt Disney Company, Warner Brothers Entertainment, uh, Hopscotch Entertainment, uh, One Icon, Studio Canal, and uh, and Transmission Films. You'll be getting you'll be getting access to all seven movie channels, including Foxtel Movies Premiere, Foxtel Movies Comedy, Foxtel Movies Drama, Romance. Foxtel Movies Thriller Crime, Foxtel Movies Action Adventure, Foxtel Movies Family, Foxtel Movies Masterpiece. When it launches, Presto will be available on PC and Mac computers with, uh, uh, I'll try that again, available on PC and Mac computers with iOS and Android tablets uh, coming later. Presto is set to launch later this year 20 for $24.99 per month with no contracts attached. So how is this different from uh, Foxtel Go, um, Foxtel Play, and all those other ones that yeah, are... This one seems to be specifically movies and solely streaming. I don't know. I think... So it's yeah, more like a Netflix. Yeah, it's, it kind of kind of sort of is more like a Netflix. Um, it's a Netflix that'll work in Australia. Um, Where did you get that article from, just out of curiosity? Uh, all my stories tonight have come courtesy of Gizmodo. Because that is a word-for-word -word copy of the actual press release put out by Foxtel. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's probably what they did. They yeah. just slapped it in there. Because <laughs> I'm reading the <coughs> reading the Foxtel one, and it's yeah, it's basically a word-for-word -word copy. Yeah. Of course, yeah, I didn't actually take the whole story and put it in the show notes, because that would be bad. I just yeah, took the, the highlights. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um... Yeah, it just seems like as you said, it's 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 purely movies, um, and past the stream Fox is providing live and on demand access to Foxtel's most popular movie content. So yeah, it's just it looks like a purely streaming service. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. They've all got their own <laughs> take on this. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Uh, so who knows? I mean. Things like that in Australia have a habit of hanging around for a month and then going away anyway. Well, I just think there's a lot of overlap between this and, and the other services that I mentioned. Yeah, on the um, on um, Tech Webcast, they actually were interviewing two people from Foxtel last episode or the episode before. And they never mentioned this, obviously, because it, you know, it hadn't been launched. Um, but, yeah, they were talking about the Foxtel Go and Foxtel Play. And, yeah, and this one is just a, another thing of the same time, as far as I know. Yeah, it's... I mean, I guess you've got... They, they must be sort of expanding their licenses when they sign contracts with, with other, you know, with the big big wigs in the industry. They must be slowly integrating this whole online thing because every time they release something, there's more studios or there's more content available so it's almost like it's a almost like an upgrade rather than a replacement it's sort of it's yeah it's a little bit i don't know maybe don't know. it's expensive though compared to i mean i know we technically can't get netflix but you know for the people who know what they're doing um you know it's still an extra if to do the foxtel thing this presto thing it's still an extra 10 15 dollars a month on what you could be charged if you do the Netflix thing, mm. albeit illegal, immoral, and and not supposed to be done. Yeah, oh, it's it's funny because somebody was saying today, somebody's uh, in our chat room was saying today that they, I'm pretty sure I'll have to, I should have looked the story up, but I think they said they signed up to Netflix, and only to find out that the um, the particular show they signed up to watch wasn't available in Australia, even though they'd just signed up for the service, they couldn't get it. Um, so they just downloaded the <laughs> the show from a torrent because they'd already paid to watch it, found out they couldn't watch it. And it's like, well, doesn't that give me the right to watch it soon as I've just paid for it? So, well, they couldn't have done that right because... I don't think it was Netflix. It was the other one. What's the other um, the other streaming service? Hang on, I'll have to go. Uh, Amazon, sorry. Yeah. 
But even still, I mean, if if they to sign up to that thing, you have to have already convince that that you're in America. Otherwise, it doesn't even let you sign up. And if you convince that you're in America, then you should be able to watch whatever content or well, Americans not can watch. If you're going through proxy servers, it could be so dog slow you just can't do it. Uh, okay, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so it's not. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, I suppose we've had. Android news, we better have Apple news, otherwise we'll get hate mail. <coughs> so, just quickly, the, the whole new 5C thing with all the colours, you know, the, five, the, the, the iPhone 5 crap. Um, basically, they're saying that the bright pink iPhone 5 uh, yeah. is the largest seller, followed by... Uh, yeah, so the, the, the pink iPhone has sold almost as much as all the other colours combined. 90% of the new iPhones were sold that were sold were the new coloured versions with just 1 in 10 customers taking the white one. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> it's interesting actually that almost half the new iPhone 5C sold in the UK were pink with blue, the next most popular, followed by green, then white. The least popular colour is yellow with 1% of Apple customers picking yellow. <laughs> So, would it be a safe assumption to say that most, if not all, the pink ones were probably sold to females? Or hairdressers. <laughs> PA, did you buy a pink one? Just checking. Um, <laughs> but you can see the, the thing there. So, yeah, 1% was, 46% was pink, 32 blue, 12% green, 9% white. So, yeah, it's... Um, Interesting, given that, what, Apple has sworn black and blue for the last five years that you only need this one colour, that's all you're getting because that's, that's all you need, <laughs> or two colours. be so. interesting to see if they could actually, um, if they also included the, I know it's a different phone, different specs and different amount, but if they'd actually included the um, 5S colours as well. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be the business phone with the upmarket people buying, see? That's, yeah. that's that's what you know you can rip you got th this way they can rip off two sets of customers <laughs> they can rip off the people who haven't got the money and the people who have got the money <laughs> yes I know PA PA I, 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 you're uh, I'm fully aware that that, that it's pink is cool which is why I'm picking on you <laughs> thought you would have tried to do a, a an iOS story with yeah, a little bit of you know objective objectivity that's pretty objective <laughs> Yeah, you almost you got through almost the whole story without picking on them, <laughs> except for the bit at the start and the bit at the end. Yeah, other than that, that's fine. No, no, it's it's. I mean, it was just an interesting story. And the other interesting statistic I read the other day: they sold nine million between both the uh, configurations. They sold nine million phones on the opening weekend, um, <laughs> which is the highest uh, sales of an opening weekend, as opposed to last. The highest was five million. Um, What's interesting is Android's activating something like 200,000 phones a day or something. So, you know, it, it's a continual thing, whereas iPhone sold their 9 million and then that's it for the next 12 months till they release something else. So, Yeah, but you'll probably find that a lot of people with the iOS side, they it's, it's almost like that they're in two camps because generally a contract runs out every two years. They bring out a phone every year and it's only really a major upgrade every second year. So the people that are kind of lined up with the, the release of the 4 and the 5 and then the 6, yeah, that's probably only, that'll probably be more than half. And then you get the other side that are lined up with the 4S, the 5S and the 6S kind of release. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. But as you say, I mean, the, the fact that a lot of people are upgrading their operating system... Um, <sighs> I mean, was that detrimental to the sales? Clearly not, because they sold nearly twice as much as they've ever sold before. So maybe people were upgrading their operating system, then offloading their phones, and then getting new ones. So I don't know. It's it's interesting. It's it's interesting that they're um, the way they. I don't know. Their so, their release cycle is just weird. If you ask me, it just doesn't. It's not what anyone else does, which I guess is what works for them. So. You know. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, yeah, it's almost like that. Yeah, they they kind of stretch the the model out for two years. They'll bring out the 
brand new model, which mm. is completely different to the previous one. But then the next year is just an upgrade of that model, and then they go to the brand new model on the second year. Yeah, um, and that's what I mean. It's I mean I guess in some respects I don't know what the contracts are in the states, but most contracts are signed here are two years. So I guess if you're doing it every second year, it kind of makes sense because you know you're you're um, hitting your target market after two years again, aren't you? I mean, if they bought one device two years later, they ready to upgrade again. I mean, they'll probably buy buy the device again so yeah true I don't know just um, another I've got a Blackberry story I've got one more Apple story just to finish it off um, there's a mob called Square Trade who does durability testing on phones among other things and they're saying that the new um, <coughs> they're a provider of, of like insurance for your phone so if you break your phone you can get insurance through this through this mob and they'll recover it um, they tested all the new iPhones just to see what their durability was for their insurance premiums and things like that. And they've found the latest models aren't as durable as last year's phone. Um, they're basically saying that uh, everything that withstood all their tests last year, they repeated the same on both the new lots of phones. And um, they pretty much all failed all the tests they passed last time. Um, the... Apparently, the uh, fingerprint sensor broke the first time they dropped the phone, which was, you know, the 5S's sort of major feature that everybody wants. Um, and they're saying it's strange because generally every time Apple release a new model, it's more durable than the, the previous model, but this time it's gone completely the other way. I mean, they, they dropped them from, you know, one metre and they were completely not just shattering a screen, the whole casing and phone was, was coming apart. So, um, and they well, had one there. a bad patch. <laughs> well, that's what Apple would say, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he said, you know, the they're just not, uh, and doesn't know, like, is it because they've made them cheaper? Is it because they've, Thin the aluminium or the change the plastic on the five. Is it the five C's? Is that it's plastic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you unapologetically expect- plastic. Yeah. I mean, but having said that, my HTC Desire was plastic, and that thing got thrown around and dropped and kicked and run over, and it never had a problem. So, mm, are they using bad Gorilla Glass? Are they using like you know the Chinese version of Gorilla Glass or what? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm still using the bloody loan phone, um, the the Nexus, because yeah, Telstra haven't got me. Um, they reckon that it's it's replaced again. They've replaced it. I rang them up. I emailed them the other day saying, "Yeah, where is it? Because you've had you've had it for like two weeks. And I'm going away next week." And um, <laughs> the guy said, "Oh yeah, it's it's on its way back. It'll be here the today tomorrow kind of thing," which was yesterday slash today. Um, I still haven't heard, and they've. Replaced it again. So they've been great. You know, the, it's the second time that it's stuffed up. It's the second time they've replaced it. Um, the first time they tried to blame it on being dropped and they were going to charge me 230 bucks, but they waived that, which is mm. great. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, a, you know. I'm not a big fan of the HTC at the moment, given that I've had, you know, two, two issues with it where it's exactly the same thing. The only thing it could be, I can put it down to potentially is the charger that I'm using. Maybe it's shorting it out somehow. It can happen. I mean, it, and you could just have a, a lot. Of, I had a bad. I had a problem with um, my first. I think it was the DoPod, the last Windows phone I got before I started in Android. And every time I'd send it away, it had functioned correctly. They'd send it back, and it'd fail. You know, and I got sick of it to the point where I walked into the shop and threw it against the wall and said, "Now give me another one that works." Well, that's the thing. Every time this is, my one's stuffed up, they've given me a different phone because HTC's policy is just to replace it rather than uh, okay. repair it. Oh, I don't know. What phone is it? HTC what? HTC One. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you have to ask Warlock about it. He loves his. He thinks it's the best phone ever, re- ever released. Oh, it is when it works. <laughs> so <laughs> the problem is it doesn't work, right? Oh. <laughs> so my boss's iPhone, he just literally bought like, I don't, know, I don't know why, like two days before the new iPhone came out, he went and bought one, like the old one. Cause Probably because it was dropped in price, maybe? <laughs> oh, who knows? No, he went to an app, he went to Harvey Norman or something and bought it. Mm. And um, he had it, I don't know, he goes through 
if for some reason he keeps buying iPhones, and he would probably go through an iPhone every six, eight weeks. <laughs> That's all he gets out of them. He just, I don't know, he just destroys them. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. Must have more money than sense if he can buy a brand yeah, well, new iPhone every the, couple of months. There's that. Well, it's all business tax write-off, but it's like, <laughs> dude... <laughs> You know, I can have the same phone for two or three years without a problem, and you can't get three months out of one. Yeah, yeah so. but I mean, we do know what we're doing with them. Although, like, I've broken mine twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the exception rather than the rule. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't know what he does with it. But he like gets them to the point where they're completely destroyed and not functioning at all. So I don't know. Pfft, I don't know what he does. But anyway, um, mm. BlackBerry. Has, and this is not really surprising, but BlackBerry has agreed to sell itself because, I don't know, some, no one else could sell it, anyway, for $4.7 billion US, which is about $5 billion Australian, to a group led by Fairfax Financial Holdings, which is their largest shareholder anyway. Um, BlackBerry said the letter of in- intent has been signed and the shareholders will receive uh, $9 US in cash for each share they own. Um, so is that Fairfax as in the Australian Fairfax company? Fairfax Financial Holdings. Were they related to Fairfax as in the media people? Probably, you would think so, wouldn't you? I don't know. His Where's Eric when you need him? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't look it up, to be honest. It wouldn't surprise me if they were. But um, they, they might not be. It might be just complete coincidence. But um, Fairfax had... Um, Prem Watzer, a former board member who owns 10% of BlackBerry, um, stepped down when BlackBerry announced it was considering a sale last month. Um, so basically, uh, who is it? Mr. Watzer is one of Canada's best known value investors and the billionaire founder of Fairfax Financial Holdings. So there you go, so they're not the same. Um, he's been compared to Warren Buffett because of his investing approach. Uh, but uh, yeah, so they've hold, halted trading um, because the stock shares plunged after the company announced Friday a loss of one billion dollars. Um, so, <coughs> and really, Pi- BlackBerry was pioneered in 1999. So, it really isn't that old compared to uh, a lot of the other. Yeah, I thought it was uh, older. Well, in terms of their phone like the the blackberry phones like the yeah. smartphones 1999 they you know they started the 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 craze i guess originally you know um when you consider i mean there was i think before that there was like the palm pilot and the compact you know little ones but i think h blackberry was the first sort of all-in-one deal um okay. So they basically had run of the market from 1999 to 2007 when Apple debuted the iPhone. And in, what, six years, they've gone from king of the castle to dead. Yeah, well, <laughs> so same as Nokia. Nokia, yeah, exactly. They used to have 99% of the market share. Yeah, I was and a Nokia fan. Yeah. Way back. I used to be a fan of Motorola because Motorola used to make most of the phones for other companies anyway. Um and if it wasn't them, it was Ericsson. You know. So, but it's amazing yeah, how liked. things change. No, I, I must admit, I was no. I think I've always been Nokia, um, through the analog kind of days, and then into the first lot of um, digital phones, and then, and then I think I, then I had a Windows phone for a bit. Um, I had the one that uh, had the slide-out keyboard from the side. Can't yeah, remember. The no, it might have. Or the, they had another name as well, but that's what they were. That's why I said. Yeah. Yep. No, I can't think of what I what I know it is. But anyway, and then I went from that to the iPhone, hmm. and then to Android. It was funny. I never touched Nokia because I always said they were too gimmicky. Because <laughs> um, oh, okay. I used to just use straight, no frills. Ericsson's and Motorola's had really good signal, really good battery life made really good call quality and that's that's all I did but they did it really well you know and that went on for years I mean I had a Motorola bag phone analog bag phone and then my first digital phone was the Motorola Jazz and then I had 
the Philips Savvy, which had eight week standby time. <laughs> um, hmm. And then I had the Ericsson, I think it used to be called the T28 or something, and they call it the Shark Phone. It was fully waterproof and dustproof, and yep. I had a couple of those. And then after that, I actually started getting into um, Ericsson, started doing touch tablet like used to use a stylus and a black and white screen um you know tablet phones so um and then they amalgamated with sony and became sony ericsson yeah and then everything fell apart yeah. <laughs> so but yeah so basically you know this year's they've launched the blackberry z10 and the q ken the q q ken q10 which has got the keyboard on it um but pretty much that's their, that was their last hurrah. That's pretty much going to be the last phone they make, I think, um, as their current their current sort of company. Um, yeah. they, what was strange, they used to be known as RIM, which was doing really well as, as the company and had other branches, and then they closed down everything else, changed RIM to BlackBerry and fell apart. So, yeah. <laughs> No, I think they were falling apart before they changed well, their name. They were, but you know, it didn't help. <laughs> so, um, one thing I do want to do too in the chat room just reminded me of it. Thanks for that, guys. I actually want to do this at the start of the show. I just want to sh- do a shout out to uh, Milo. He's um, just had just had the bad news that his father's um, sick, so um, so he's got lung cancer, I believe. So, if you guys want to. Um, you know, show your support the guys who know him. Show your support. Send him a, a Facebook message and and you know let let you know that we're thinking of him and and uh, yeah. So I just want to give a shout out shout out to to him for that. And uh, I should say too, he's a great supporter of our uh, Aussie Tech Heads hosting. He's got about well, he's got his radio streaming. He's got the Milo flight. He's got half a dozen websites uh, through our hosting. So hook it hook it up and. Uh, Ask him what he thinks of it. He seems to enjoy it. <laughs> so yeah, so hang in there, Milo. Um, you'll you'll you know we're, we're all thinking of you, and don't be afraid to you know ask for help if you need it. So alrighty. Um, <coughs> oh, fair income. Yeah. Moving on. Yep. If I can breathe. All right. Jump in to do another one. Mm-hmm. I can do another. One. You just drink. Let me do the. Let me do all the hard work. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll just sit here and sweat my ring out. <laughs> Anyone can bypass your iOS 7 lock screen and make calls on your phone. And um, the story actually has a video attached to it, but I don't know whether Will's kind of set up to... to I can if you can give me the... Uh... Show the video? Mm-hmm. You don't, don't, have, don't have access to the show notes? I uh, don't have them pulled up in front of me, sorry. Uh, okay. Well, well, too bad, people. You just, just have to go to the show notes, click on the link, and then see the video yourself. But <laughs> essentially, just uh, just just the other day, we came across iOS seven vulnerability that will uh, will let hang on will let creeps see your photos. And just let me scroll this down so I can see what I'm reading, and even share them from behind the lock screen. But that's not all. Turns out you can make calls from behind the lock screen too. This bug was discovered by Karim Daoud, I think that's pronounced. Um, and it's even easier to pull off than the camera bug. Just take a lock, locked iPhone, go to the emergency dialer, type a number and uh, hammer on the call button. Eventually the phone will lock, will lock up and reboot. Um, but the call goes through and you'll be able to uh, replicate the bug on an iPhone 5. Uh, possibly someone could be making calls from your locked, locked phone while you are looking. Um, hang on, I'll start that one again as well. The possibility that someone could be making calls from your locked phone while you are looking uh, or you're not looking is something of a privacy concern. Though it's not quite as creepy as the um, prospect of strangers checking out your private photos and then sharing them with the world via your social media accounts. But there's no quick fix for the problem. You can um, thwart the the other bug by uh, disabling the control center on the lock screen. There doesn't seem to be a way to turn this vulnerability off though. So we've got to wait for a... um, a fix to come along in 7.1 or 7.01 or whatever they want to call it. 
you know what's interesting? The video I just pulled up on YouTube. The guy's smart enough to figure out how to bypass the lock screen. And he's not smart enough to, to figure out how to hold his camera phone properly. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes. But so, yeah, yeah, so um that's not, not good. Not, there's been a few of those sort of on and brillies over the over the years. Not just with although they seem to happen mainly. The lock screen seems to be a bit buggy for uh for Apple, but there has also been vulnerabilities for uh, Android as well over the years with lock screen lock screen bugs and goalie you know regarding if you've got physical access to the phone. But then again, if you've got physical access to the phone, anything can be worked around with enough time. Yeah, all bets are off in that case. Yeah, I mean it. It's not really lock screens, passwords, all that sort of stuff aren't really designed to. Um, to keep people out of your phone they're just designed to stop if you've you know got your phone laying around on the table it's just stop someone from from peeking at it but it's if you've pinched the phone you've got access to it it's like anything you know he keeps the honest people out yeah exactly you know um and it's like the same with your pc you can have all the passwords and security in the world but if somebody physically has a hat yeah if somebody physically has access to the pc whether it's running windows um mac os you know um linux whatever if they physically can get their hands on that system there's no no securing it yeah uh, you know so True. um it, it's yeah unfortunately <laughs> And I've got to say this again because I had an argument with somebody on Facebook the other day. If you have a Mac, please install antivirus. They do get... They are just as prone to getting viruses as PCs, especially now that they're becoming more popular. They are becoming targets for, for hackers and virus writers. So please install an antivirus. Just because the virus doesn't affect you doesn't mean that when you send me the email, I don't get the virus. So even though I have antivirus, but if you if you've got a you know a Mac and an attachment has a virus in it, you may not get it. You might send that out to twenty friends, and one of them might. So you know, put antivirus on your Mac. <laughs> so so there, <laughs> you've been told. I might, I might actually end up getting a Mac um, with any luck. No, what do you want to do that for? Oh, because well, obviously when um, you know I. I became in between jobs I had to give the laptop back because that was a work ah, okay. laptop yep. so I thought oh well, yeah I've got a Windows PC I've got an Android phone and tablet I might get a Mac and or like a MacBook Air just to sort of that way I can be completely agnostic and not show <laughs> favoritism and and yeah and see what happens see how it goes actually I have to admit my I think it's my nephew has got the uh, has he got the MacBook Air or has he got the Pro no he's got the MacBook Air and so I'll tell you what, it's not a bad little laptop for what it is. It, you know, it's um, not super powerful by any means, but it does everything you ever want to do on a day-to-day basis. You know. Yeah, well, I don't think it's. I mean, it's not designed. I don't think any of the Mac products are designed to run games or anything. Oh, uh, the MacBook Pros and stuff like that. You know, they're your best chance if you want to do things like that. But yeah. Um, I mean, he he uses his macbook pro he it works at heart he does a lot of studio recording and sound recording mixing that sort of stuff yeah so he's just got the air there when he's when he is in the studio he just uses the air as his everything else system so but yeah you know they're, they're not horrible <laughs> like, <laughs> you know um if, if i was going to buy a, a a cheap mac it would be something like that to use to take with you um you know as i said i'm not against and I, I keep saying this and people don't believe me I'm not against Apple I just don't like them ripping people off and you know uh, pretending to innovate when they don't <laughs> you know so that's all but uh, the one big story I don't, I don't know how we missed it we were talking about the NBN earlier and it didn't even occur to me that the entire NBN board um, submitted their resignations <laughs> yeah only because they were encouraged to no, one person didn't apparently Oh, one didn't. Has it changed, has it? Yeah, yeah. well, unless that person caved in recently. But yeah, as of the other day, they all chucked it in except for, I don't know who this one person was, but one person didn't do it. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, apparently um, Mr. Turnbull hinted in July after NBN co-chief executive Mike quickly quit the most sacked board members from the organisation responsible for the NBN network. Um, 
you don't need to write NBN Network, people. NBN stands for National. <laughs> it's the National Broadband Network Network. network. So um, people who write ATM machine. ATM machine. <laughs> I used to work for a company called CFC Computers, which was Consumer Friendly Computers Computers. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the registered business name was CFC, CFC Computers. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, you know, the ambient has been so reliable and, and so bulletproof and hasn't had any cons- any problems or any delays at all. Um, so this is in no way going to affect anything that's been happening. <laughs> like... Really, what's what's the deal? Why is it so hard to get decent internet in this country? Am I missing something? Or, well, I mean, it's a big country with not a lot of people in it. I mean, there's a big spaces, you know, spans of nothingness. Oh, I realise that, but I mean, in the CBDs and and a lot of the you know surrounding areas, it's pretty densely populated. It's not super dense but then again a lot of other companies that have vast areas have fantastic internet so you know yeah but even America where you know the internet was invented um, <laughs> they've got they've got similar issues in in that you know AT&T and only cover certain parts mm. of it and Verizon only cover certain parts and um, so yeah it's the same yep. sort of issues we've got here but the difference is over there it's only in certain areas you very few people have bad internet in the states. I mean, very few people who live in, you know, semi-civilized areas have bad internet in the states. Whereas yeah. here, we don't have good internet anywhere. You know, it's bad internet everywhere and worse in a lot of places. Like for example, down in Evans Head, they're on a Optus backend, ADSL one, with five twelve k down and one hundred and twenty eight k up. Yeah, that's true. I remember yeah. seeing a um, I don't know if it was a, I don't know if it was actually a, an episode or it was just one of those times in between episodes where the Twit gang were just chatting amongst themselves, and Tom had said that he's got I think he said he's got six hundred and fifty down. Yeah. And sixty five up or something. Yeah, he's on the gigabit to the nut to the whatever it is. Yeah, the fiber to the node or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's guy. it. And they complain that their in, their internet's slow compared to places like China, where, where yes, their internet's fast. Okay, it's restricted. But a friend of mine <laughs> went over there at a hotel, and their free internet that the hotel gave out was a hundred meg down and ninety meg up. <laughs> you know, so uh, it just it just makes it ridiculous, um, especially when you uh, like we. There's, when we were doing a honeymoon, we stayed at a, um, a hotel and I was saying they had free Wi-Fi, which, I mean, technically they had free Wi-Fi, but they had um, they had the router in the office, which was nowhere near the rest of the hotel. So the only way you could get the free Wi-Fi was to walk out and go and sit in front of the front door at the office and use the free Wi-Fi. Like... You yeah. know, why? That's just ridiculous. And then when you did finally connect to it, it was like one meg, one meg down. Yeah, I, I, it's going to be interesting when I get to the States to find out because every hotel we're staying at is um got complimentary Wi-Fi. And, um, I mean, if it was like when I went to Sydney, although apparently, you know, the, it turns out that their internet wasn't that crash hot though, while I was staying there because it was dog slow. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see what it's like in these hotels, whether it's fast or, or you know, it's like a shared thing amongst all the bloody mm. all the all the guests, and we all get piddly little speeds. Well, that can be part of it too. I mean, you can have you might have fiber to the node, so you might have a thousand, you know, in and a thousand out, but you've got a hundred people using it, you know. So exactly, you know, but. <laughs> Um, if, it, if it wasn't for the time difference, I, you know, I'd try and actually join you guys on the show from over there. But it'd be two thirty in the morning or something. That's fine. Yeah. We might do. A, we might uh, actually. That's an interesting point. We might hook up at some point. Um, you know, late night one my time or something at four o'clock in the morning my time, which will be you know eight o'clock in the morning or something over there. And we might just do a five minute, uh, just quick thing, see how things are traveling, and then see what the internet's like and see how things yeah. go because that would be, be the interesting interesting raving reporter 
Yeah, yeah, basically. Raving reporter? Yeah. Raving mad raving, reporter. Raving, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're staying at um, Anaheim uh, for the first week. Then we're going to San Diego for the second week. And then we're back to LA proper for the third week. Um, so, yeah, so it should be good. Yeah, no, that, that I mean, it, it'd be good, that's for sure. It's something that... Um, I have to admit, though, if I was ever going to go to another country, I don't think it'd be America. It's just too much stress these days. <laughs> just no. the whole, uh, you know, the whole taking your shoes off thing. That's. No, I mean, it's going to be fun. Yeah, because <laughs> you've got nothing better to do when you're just flying into a country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know I'm going to wear that because I'm taking. Um, for those who don't know, I've got a, a disability, so I'm taking a wheelchair with me, just for the day trips and stuff. Mm. Um, so. It'd be interesting to see whether, yeah, you know, me being in that, they'll kind of just, you know, let me go through. <laughs> no, you'll be more of a target because. If you <laughs> well, apparently, funny you should say that. I don't know if, how much of a fan you are but of Bugs Bunny of cartoons. Yeah. But there's a Bugs Bunny cartoon where, um, it's all about the what different animals and what they're what they're worth uh, you know, in during hunting season and apparently at the time rabbits were worth next to nothing and that's because they were considered cute and, and you know, they wouldn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Um, well, apparently, generally, people with disabilities are kind of you know, treated the same way but in Disneyland at the moment, you get people with disabilities have got like different lines and they can go in <laughs> different doors and all that kind of stuff and there's people over there at the moment that are um, holding the holding like going into these these um cues that they're entitled to because they've got disabilities but then when they get to the to the actual ride then an able-bodied person would jump in and, and actually take the ride these people with disabilities are actually just placeholders, placeholders. in these queues, <laughs> and they're charging people like 100 bucks a time to do this just to, so they can jump the queue oh well there you go you might be able to make some money while you're over exactly, there <laughs> yeah. oh dear <clears throat> that's just sad but uh, all right, so what are we? We're probably getting we close to, to to wrap up. Yeah, that'd be unusual. We've never done that before. <laughs> I've got one more story. All right, you go. I'm just trying to find mine quickly while you're uh, while you're doing that. I've got a Microsoft story. Uh, here we go. All right, so the um, the Surface Two is um, almost released. I think it's just about to be released. Or only has just been released. Um, I'm not really that across Microsoft products as I used to be. But um, this story is about how Microsoft seems to have dropped the um, the Australia tax or you know what's called yeah. anecdotally known as the Australia tax. Uh, the story goes on to say, get the, um, get the tilted party hat uh, off your head. Microsoft has ditched its love of Australia tax for the new Surface 2 and Surface Pro 2 tablets. In fact, Aussies may actually be getting the Surface 2 tablets cheaper than the US. The Surface 2 and Surface 2 Pro um, were announced by Microsoft in uh, the wee hours of this morning, so this was a couple of days ago. The new base model, the Surface 2, ditches the RT moniker despite running the Windows RT 8.1 update uh, under the hood um, of the new white lightning, of, the, of, of this new white lightning. I didn't read right. Uh, you'll find a new Tegra 4 processor, 1080p screen, rather than the old um, 1366 by 768 panel, USB 3 ports instead of USB 2, 25% more battery increase. Um, the Surface 2 comes with 32 gigabyte and 64 gigabyte I iterations, starting at $529 in Australia as a standalone model. Uh, no type cover, so no fancy keyboard cover. While the 64 model will be, will go for $639, uh, and the story does go on to sort of say, by the time you factor in the um, the difference in the dollar and the add on the the sales tax and add on all the taxes that they have in America because their prices don't, um, their advertised prices don't include all their state taxes, federal taxes and whatnot. In certain instances. Um, like the story, like the story says, we're actually going to be end up being cheaper than what it would be to to get over there. Right up until the point where they increase the GST. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just when you think you're getting a good deal, the prime minister's going to screw you over. <laughs> yeah, getting quick. 
Alrighty, just one more story, and uh, I'm quite interested in this, and if I, I would actually really like to get one. This is a Android phone watch um, featuring quad band connection. Uh, it has a 2-inch capacitive screen and 2 megapixel camera. Um, it basically has Bluetooth, uh, you know, the option you can run a Bluetooth off it as well. Um, so you you know, make calls easily. Uh, it obviously, it runs most of the stuff that is in the Android store. It's got um, Android 2.2 on it, so it is an older option, but, you know, it's not completely outdated. Uh, it's got 2 megapixel camera. It comes with an 8 gig micro SD, which you can upgrade as well. comes in black, white, <coughs> cam um, camouflage or grey. Uh, obviously, has a USB port, which helps it charge as well as plugs it in. Um, it's got the stylus and stuff, but you can also use um, the. It, you know, it is. Uh, you can kind of use it with your finger. It is big enough to to kind of do that. Um, and uh, it has a uh, 256 meg RAM. It has a 416 megahertz with processor, which doesn't sound like a lot, but um, on that you could run you know, anything you would r want to run on a screen that size. It would play, it plays movies if you want to run movies, but it will play them quite happily. Um, it will even play a lot of the original um, games and stuff like that. All the Office applications, all your calendars, um, your G even your GPS apps and stuff will work. It does actually have a GPS in it. It has um, Wi-Fi uh, yeah, it's got a microphone, speaker, so all that sort of stuff. It's a two-inch screen, so I think it's going to be fantastic. I really want to get one, um, and I was really surprised when I saw the price. They're only two hundred bucks, which um, sounds like a lot, but given that it's one of the first, looks like actually functioning Android, <laughs> um, well, smart watches, I guess, not just Android, but you know, intelligent watches in general, it actually seems to work quite well. There's a few videos on YouTube where people do, you know, use it and um, they're quite happy with it. And the battery lasts, you know, most people are saying the battery lasts all day um, without without a really too much of an issue, as long as you don't leave the screen on sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so, because it, it's got the accelerometers and the gravity sensors in it as well as the GPS... It's great for the people who use the data logging for uh, when they're using their uh, Runtastic apps and things like that. So, so yeah. Sounds good. I mean, how does that compare price-wise to the ones that have just come out now, the ones that are, you know, the Pebble and... The Pebbles. Well, I actually, I think they're about... Uh, Warlock in the chat room will be able to tell me that, but I believe the Pebbles... Uh, um, was it one ninety nine or two ninety nine? just for the phone but then that doesn't do any or just for the watch but the watch doesn't do anything without the programming that you've got to <laughs> program so um so yeah it, it, i mean i think it's fantastic i'm more than happy to <laughs> if i had a spare 200 bucks laying around i'd love to buy one of those um yeah. it'd be you know you because because you can use your bluetooth headset with it obviously so um, and it does have a 2 megapixel camera that does photo and video so a lot of places that don't I notice now there's a lot more um, businesses that don't allow phones in in like staff rooms and meeting rooms and and things like that so yeah but they'll just change that rule to include watches well they're already starting to change it to include Google Glasses but yeah. you know this is probably the best for, for for the money, though, this is probably the best, the closest thing you'll get to Google Glass <laughs> in terms of, you know, not being a phone. Um, it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, it does everything you want to do. It plays music, so while you're, you know, at the gym or whatever, you can got your music, you got... I don't know, it'll be interesting. Um, the Pebble's 170-ish plus postage, basically. So 200 bucks, more or less. Yeah. So... If it would come down to the pebble or this, I think I'd take this. <laughs> All right. So. Fair enough. Yeah. No, it's just... I don't know. There's something about it. I think it reminds me of the old, like, uh, Nintendo fun watches that had, you know, Mario and <laughs> all that sort of stuff on it. Yeah. So, I think that's probably what it is. Well, 
Uh, you got any more stories or? No, I am done like a dinner for the next three weeks. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah, you're out of here after this will be your last show. Yeah, oh, well. this time next week I'll be on a plane, probably flying over Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you're flying over and not crashing into, you know, but you can't control these things. Um, <laughs> am I helping? <laughs> so I will be right, right at the back of the plane anyway. And oh, that's fine. Yeah. You'll get to watch the front go down first. Well, exactly. Yeah. No, <laughs> a plane's never backed into a mountain before. Um, no. Well, this is true. Yeah. This is always the first time for everything, I suppose. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, alrighty, well, um, we'll leave it at that. Uh, so basically, yeah, don't forget, you can check it, check us out, aussietechheads.com.au. You can go to slash live for our live broadcasting, slash radio to check out everything that's that's on a uh, on a loop there. Go to slash specials and hosting for our hosting packages. Um, don't forget the Twitter, uh, Aussie Tech News, which is just a, a brief uh, news feed that, that scrolls through every so often and and it gives you something, some eye candy. Um, you know, if by eye candy, I mean, like, geek porn, like, you know, new phones and stuff. Um, alrighty, I so don't know I what he's talking about, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're the one that told me about it in the first place. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so you can check us out on Twitter, Aussie Tech Heads, or at Aussie Tech Heads. Um, at Mr. Tomkinson for myself, M R T O M K I N S O N. You can have at Shane nineteen seventy three S H A Y N E one nine seven three. And uh, although he's not here tonight, you can check out Warlock uh, at Warlock, um, or you can do Glenn, Will, Shane, or Jason at AussieTechHeads.com.au if you want to shoot us an email. Facebook is facebookcom slash AussieTechHeads. Drop in there, check out what's going on in there. Tell us how much you love us, how much you hate us, how much you want to be on the show, all that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> excuse me and also you can do the uh, Aussie Tech Heads Daily which is published that's the newspaper that's published twice a day so check that out and um, it's as I was saying before that's got more than just tech that's a bit of everything in there so check that one out um, alrighty so I guess all that's left for me to say is thank you Lounge for joining us and keeping us uh, on the straight and narrow ish um, thanks Shane for uh, for being here tonight and being available and not being sick and even when you're sick you work through it and you push through it like a man um <laughs> second week in a row there yeah I mean, see i'm not uh, actually sick like last week i was feeling under the weather and anything now i just kind of sound sick but i actually feel all right that's usually the way it works by the time you actually sound sick you're actually better yeah. and um glenn who's uh everybody you know drop on the f- drop Drop Glenn a line on Facebook or Twitter and, you know, tell him to, to harden up and, you know. All send him flowers. Stuff. Yeah, you know. Send him pink teddy bears and, and whatever. He'll enjoy it. And uh, my name's Will and uh, thanks for watching, guys. And don't forget, we do this every week. So hopefully we'll see you next time. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. Bye.